Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Walk In My Shoes. I think if you're someone that's really passionate about what it is you do, and it doesn't have to be interior design, it can be anything, then you know often the lines between work and personal are very, very blurred. And that can make it really difficult at times but also it's what really makes it enjoyable, that work doesn't really feel like work. That's when you know you really love what you're doing. The first thing I do in my mornings is wake up very, very early. Generally, it's a 5 a.m. start, but this morning I was awake at four. I do some reading and learning, which I try to do every day if I can, um, a little bit of meditating, some exercise, and if I can get my hair done, I squeeze that in too, and I also hop to the flower market, which frankly is the best part of my morning routine. Okay, so next week, I'm actually gonna pull you along with me to the flower market. But for this week, I'm just gonna show you what I do with my flowers when they get home. I will always, if I can, really try to get my hands on some hydrangea. I love hydrangea. They feel really full and fresh and, you know, just bursting with life. I love all the different colors of hydrangea, but with my house and my scheme, I love the way the house looks and makes me feel when they're sort of in neutral tones. You may feel like, as I did, color, bursts of color in the house with flowers really work beautifully and they may really do and you may really love it, which is great. For me, what I find is where I've tried to have a lot of color in flowers in my interiors because I've tried to use them as accents, actually they haven't made me feel very relaxed so when i've tried it the other way around and actually used a neutral color scheme with the flowers also on top of the existing neutral scheme actually i just have such a good calm feeling when i come home and my energy just feels relaxed and it's such a lovely way to unwind to see a kind of this really beautiful almost rustic chic neutral on neutral toned flowers with the eucalyptus mixed in it's a great look and feel and it really does enhance the whole scheme of my interior but you know you have to do what's right for you okay so next i'm off to pharaoh and ball which is um, a paint company for those of you who don't know and actually the reason i'm going is because we as interior designers ordered big paint books from Farron and ball you can buy the color fans which are sort of yay big they're i guess about 30 centimeters and they're great because they've got loads of different colors in them i think they're 132 but when i'm looking at big big walls in big homes or even smaller homes i really need the biggest sample that i can get of course there is nothing like you know sampling something on the wall itself but the biggest the bigger the sample initially the more clarity i have when i'm choosing the rest of the colors in the scheme Okay, so next up is CP Heart. Now I know CP Heart really well, and we buy a lot of our sanitary wear from CP Heart, so it's very, very easy to walk past and think, I know what's in there. But my advice to you is, even if there is a shop that you know very well, that you buy lots of your interior design supplies or furniture or fixtures or sanitary wear from, do walk in because you never know what you might find. Just as a perfect example of this, I walked in and found that CP Heart very recently launched a collaborative range where you know they've had their own product made and actually it happens to be a product that I've completely fallen in love with and that I definitely want to use in my next project. Okay, so next up are castrads. Castrads do custom-made, 
cast iron radiators and they are absolutely fabulous. I know everybody is now moving towards underfloor heating and you know becoming very modern and that's fabulous. But there is something incredibly special about a contemporary classic cast iron radiator. It is so unique and makes such a beautiful statement that I think if you can even add one as a touch in a house as an accent, it's really a beautiful feature to have. I'm just getting, sorry, I'm gonna be with you in a second, updates from my team on a project and I can never not immediately look at these photos because seeing a project being installed is too exciting. <laughs> Okay, so my next stop was Mandarin Stone and I actually haven't been in here since Mandarin Stone um, came to Fulham Road and I was really excited to come into the store. The ladies were really lovely to talk to. Um, it was my first time and I got to see, in fact, some great porcelain large slabs or large tiles. One of the most important things about walking into a stone shop in particular is that the reality is, unlike with fabric where, you know, yes, you might get a smaller sample or even a larger sample and can get an idea of what the whole thing might look like, with a stone, you know, unless you actually see a large slab, it's impossible to know what that might look like because, you know, someone giving you a sample of a stone will only ever be, you know, whatever it is, 15 by 15 centimeters, or, you know, if you're lucky, 30 by 30, but it will show you one area of that big slab and seeing a big slab in its entirety really does give you an impression of what that will really look like in situ. Marble as against any other man-made tile is something that I'm personally really interested in. So if anybody wants to know a little bit more about that subject and wants me to do a little bit more research to be able to give you more information, then do please let me know in the comments box because I will look it up, I will do some more research and I will try and do another video for you on that subject. I have just welcomed in the fish that's coming for lunch today, which I'm really excited about. This comes from my favorite place, which is a um, place called Scandal. They do the freshest fish in London, if anybody wants to order. And again, I've linked them um, down below because they're amazing. And I knew um, today my daughter's friend was coming over for a play date and her mummy was coming over to have lunch with me and I wanted to arrange everything in advance. So I've had the fish come in because I know that today is a busy day. I'm obviously shooting with you guys. So I wanted to prepare everything in advance so it would be ready and I wouldn't have to um, super prep and be too stressed about it. So fish has now arrived and I know that lunch is now here and I don't need to think about the lunch in preparation for um, my daughter and her friend and her mummy. As a mum, I need to factor in not just what I'm doing work-wise during the day, I need to factor in what my children are doing, obviously. So if that means um, I need a break during the day to do something for them, then that's absolutely fine. And I love it and very lucky to be able to have that. But it just means I've got to plan it in advance to make sure it happens on time and that actually I can fit everything in around it. Not just... It ideally needs to be Hi! Oh, everyone is here. The dog, the kids. Hi, Lily. Can I have a hug? And this is what we would call an interruption. <laughs> okay, you are now seeing me being interviewed by Country and Townhouse magazine for the finest 50 designers in the UK. I cannot tell you what a massive privilege this feels like. This isn't something that you expect or require as a designer, but I have to say, as a human being, appreciation of what you do is so very important and so crucial to this industry, and I'm really grateful.
grateful not just to country and townhouse but to all the different companies who acknowledge and support and appreciate the work that we do um, i am so incredibly grateful so this is a massive thank you to country and townhouse um, for putting me in this list of the top 50 interior designers in the uk my company has been placed amongst some of the most wonderful names of interior designers who I have a huge amount of respect for. And it's a really humbling moment for me um, to see myself amongst that list, so thank you. Okay, so I know lockdown has happened and we are done with Zoom calls, but we're not really because I seem to have more Zoom calls now than I ever thought I would. So we are Zooming and in this particular call, I am discussing the next steps of design with our architect and contractor and clients. So it's really great to all be able to put our heads together. Often I think people aren't really sure um, what comes first, you know, should you get your builder first? Should you get the contractor first? Should you get your interior designer first? Try and get a whole team together at the same time. Um, there's nothing more powerful than having an incredible team together. Probably in anything, but definitely in an interior design and definitely start early. It's not difficult to develop a render or a drawing, but what makes you that extra step above and what takes your designs to another level is really being able to walk away from that render or drawing, or whatever it is, and give yourself some time. Because as a creative, you do need time to take a different view, stop and come back to it. Once you've come back to it with a fresh mind, to look at every single detail and ask yourself, can this be improved? What I always say to everybody, including to myself, is if you put this drawing in front of me or this design in front of me, would you say, wow, that's incredible. And if it moves you in that way, then you hit the nail on the head. You got it. Finally, and then it's home time for everyone, is the mood board that we've developed as a result of that scheme that you've just seen. We've obviously used all of the fabrics and the timbers and the finishes that we want to use in that scheme. But also, what we then have added is items that we may not use in the scheme. Items that may not have any direct relevance to the scheme, but items that make that scheme on the board feel inspirational. I think what you need to remember when you're putting a mood board together is, you know, yes, um, a mood board is where you've got to show off the items um, for that space, but it's also the opportunity for you to enable your client to be inspired with you and to interact with you about that space. So it's got to be alive enough to make that client want to start up a discussion and communicate about that space. Thank you for watching and if you have come this far, please hit the subscribe button. I am really trying to reach a goal of reaching a thousand followers and I would love for you to help me reach my target so that I can make more of these videos for you because I've really enjoyed them and I hope they are an inspiration to you and to others. Thank you. I have to say, the large slab, the large slabs, the large, <laughs> sorry, the large slabs of their porcelain. <laughs>